Hello everyone, I do hope you're enjoying the story so far, picking back up on Chapter 3, Zero Days Until Halloween. On the opposite side of the cemetery, Sally rested her wary ragdoll body against a tombstone. As she gathered fallen leaves from the hole where her arm had been attached, after escaping Dr. Finkelstein, she'd run straight to the cemetery, knowing that the ghosts that usually hovered close to their tomb would be celebrating and dancing with everyone else in the town square. She had, she'd have the grounds to herself. She listened to the undead ensemble play a gloomy tune on the other side of the wall, then paused their music when the clank of a coin signaled someone tipping them. Then she took the song back up. However, oh sorry, how long could she manage without her right arm? Sooner or later she'd have no choice but to return to Dr. Finkelstein's castle for it. But yet she thought she was determined to enjoy her freedom for as long as she could. The cemetery late that the cemetery gates clanked open as Sally gasped and scrambled to hide behind the tombstone. Someone else was there. She held her breath and listened anxiously for the tell tell whines of Dr. Finkelstein's electric chair. But instead, light footsteps trod tra on the stone path. No longer, uh, no louder than the leaves shuffling in the wind. The owner of the footsteps let out a burdened sigh. Sally dared to peek over the top of the headstone and silent another gasp. It was Jack Skellington. Why wasn't he at the party in the town square with everyone else? He was the guest of honor, after all. The same as he was every year. She had imagined that Jack would be wrapped up in the celebration that he'd frolicked the whole night long. Yet, on the greatest night of the year, here was the Pumpkin King alone with her. Jack tapped his chin and pondered the starless sky as he <sighs> meandered through the cemetery in the distance. The wind carried the ruckus applause of the crowd celebrating the award-winning ward winners back in the town. Jack sighed to himself as he recalled that in years past he had been the one leading them in cheers, his voice the loudest of all as he'd toasted with bubbly witches brew. He'd recount the night's best scares for the winged demon and the corpse kid and mummy boy who'd listen enraptured. He'd dance until he feared he might die again. But this year he couldn't shake an itchy bone feeling that this was all the same and would be the same the next year and the and the next year and the next year. As he passed a headstone shaped like a dog's house, he tapped his leg in a beckoning gesture. Come on, Zero. Jack's dog aroused his ghostly body from its dirtbed slumber and floated up until it hovered a few feet off the ground. As soon as Zero spotted Jack, 
His pumpkin nose glue extra bright. He floated along Jack's painted happily, panting happily. <sighs> Jack placed up the steepest of the cemetery hill, rubbing the sharp angle of his chin bone. What was this feeling gnawing at his bones? Why couldn't he be content reveling with the others in the years before? Not even Zero's soft glow cheered him up at night. He leaned on a mausoleum topped with a demon statue and sighed. He wasn't himself at night. Not at all. Everything just seemed so repetitive and dull. He'd longed for something shiny, something new. Zero floated around Jack with his tongue lull lulling out. Jack listened as the crowd partied in the distance. For a moment he felt a mid-string on his marrow as he... Remember the night's most wonderful scream in the land of the living. Ah, Zero, you should have seen me tonight. He lamented. I was at my most delic deliciously wicked. He thought back fondly of the memory of the sleepover party who had... Practically screamed off their braces when he popped out of one of their sleeping bags. He chuckled softly for all his conflicting feelings. He had to admit that there was still something magical about All Hallows' Eve. He climbed onto a tall tombstone searching to his full height, towering above Spire Hill and the Pumpkin Patch beyond. I'm the Pumpkin King, he thought fiercely. That used to mean something. Maybe it still does. He coiled his finger into claws as he practiced one of his most frightening faces he'd perfected at perform oh yeah he perfected at least 400 expressions of terror zero followed along contently the little dog loved it when jack was feeling extra scary he wagged his tail as jack stepped nimbly from tombstone to tombstone I'm the foulest thing to ever come back from the dead, Jack thought as he raised his fist towards the moon, feeling the familiar string in his bones of a good thrill. All cower when Jack the Pumpkin King stalks the shadows. Jack Yep. Zero barked excited. Jack danced his way from tombstone to tombstone, dreamingly remembering the Tempest? <laughs> Triumphant years of shrieks and screams. He twirled around the moaning angel statue, standing guard at the cemetery gates, and with a Pounce flashed his most frightening face at them. The statue's expression reminded, remained unmoving. Jack's limbs slowly sunk. The sheer melting off his face. The sneer melting off his face. He'd felt a brief moment of the old joy caused by the good scares. But now, the awareness was returning to his bones. 
He slumped against Coffin and rested his chin on his hand. Zero concentrated. Concerned nudged his friend with his glowing nose. Jack sighed. There was no use. He'd given his best performance that night, but it had still felt empty. He had to admit that he was simply growing tired of it all. The screams and scares, what was it all for? I've done it all, Zero, he said. Everything I set out to do, but there must be more than this. There simply must. He waved his skeleton hand toward the pumpkin patch in the distance. At the edge of the patch, the woods began. It was a quiet, shadowy place filled with only... Filled only with hooting owls and a strange wind. Jack had never ventured far into those woods Be for because there was no one there to scare except squirrels and squirrels scared too easily i'd scatter if a single nut fell they'd scatter if a single nut fell but now he wondered what was beyond the woods could there be a place where screams no longer echoed where blood didn't run into the streets Somewhere else. I've been the Pumpkin King for so many years, he mused. Could it be time to relinquish the crown? Give it all up. Zero nudged Jack's bony scapula with his pumpkin orange glowing to the dog's nose, dimming at his seeing Jack so melancholic. He yelped, wanting another game of chase around the tombstone, but Jack was already walking along the unfurling slope of the of Spire Hill, gazing off into the moonlight. Moonlight. Wondering why no one else in Halloween Town understood the uneasy feeling that had settled deep in his marrow. Hiding below the carved hill, Sally listened with fascination to Jack's sigh and his confession. She couldn't believe what she had heard. The Pumpkin King wanting to give up his crown she touched the hole where her right arm should be. Jack felt like he was missing something. She knew that feeling all too well. Only in Jack's case, it wasn't missing a limb, making him morose, but something broken apart from his undead soul. As Jack wandered down Spiral Hill and off towards the hinterland forest with Zero at his side, Sally rose from her hiding place and placed a hand against her chest. Jack had everything she'd never dreamed that he would crave something more, but the truth was he felt trapped just like her. Her prison was Dr. Finkelstein's tower. With its iron bars, Jack was a prisoner of his own success. Oh, Jack, she sighed. I know how you feel. That is the end of chapter three. Please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next episode. Goodbye.